What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, I'm going to be uh, putting this Z1 Motorsports extended um, pan spacer on uh, the twin turbo. So that way we can get our oil feed lines to come back down into the motor. So should be not too hard to get up in there. Just gotta drain the oil and uh, take off the oil pan. And then um, the oil pickup tube that comes down in there, I'll have to take that off as well and uh, put on a spacer that they give you. Right here, so this will go where the oil pickup is. And uh, I've seen a couple videos of people saying that the tolerances are a little bit off on these, so I might have to take the next uh, drill bit bigger size and step this up a little bit, so that way it's not such a pain to fit in there. But uh, we're also going to be relocating the oil filter from its factory position down right here. Got a nice little royal purple one on there. But... Uh, I'm going to be relocating it to somewhere up in the engine bay, maybe front cross member, somewhere anyways. Because my oil relocation kit came with two plugs that I can unscrew off, depending on how long they are, I guess. Come on. Okay. So I can take these off, and these will be the turbo oil feed ports for the turbos and then the oil return is just going to come down and into my extended sump so let's hope it all works out as good as I th am thinking it will but we'll see how it, how it goes right, now that she's up on some ramps I'm just going to get down under here and take out the oil pan bolts And then we'll be able to get the pan off, hopefully without damaging it too much. I did notice that back here, it was kind of hard to get the socket on there, so I had to kind of bend this tab around a bit. So hopefully that doesn't affect its sealing issues, but it doesn't look like it was leaking before, so hopefully it won't be leaking after I do this, because I'd hate to have to pull it off again and redo it. One, two more. Alright. Okay, now that that's all off, Probably gonna have to get my body tools and put it in there so it doesn't scratch the aluminum at all and get this thing pried down. Uh, it's gonna be fun. All right, all right. So I had to switch up the tactic a little bit. I ended up just using some old five and ones, Ugh. and then just used a hammer and put it in there and tapped my way around that. Now it seems like it's about ready to come off, so we'll see what's in there. Curious to see how it looks. And, oh, oh, it's a little bit of oil in there. A little bit of moisture. She's been sitting for two years, so I assumed that was going to be in there. No breathers on it either. So I'm going to have to extend that spot, it looks like, right there. Really clean up there, though. I like that. I like seeing that and not just a bunch of metal shavings like most of my other cars. So that's a good sign. I mean, the white's not a good sign, but that's irrelevant. That that doesn't have anything to do with that. 
All right, so we'll get this uh, pulled down and then I'm going to scrape around this with this flat razor. So it should make the job pretty easy. Okay, no pans off. Um, gasket's all pretty much cleaned off with a razor. I can get it a little bit more probably, but I'm going to pull off these two bolts there so we can take my oil pickup and extend it. So we'll get to that right now. So now there's a new problem, like there always is. Okay. The issue now is the fact that this bolt comes free all easy when I went to break it free. This one is not moving at all. And so I was like, oh, you know, I'll just grab the impact real quick and then hit it real, you know, it'll come right out. It still didn't move. So hopefully it doesn't break that little tiny aluminum tab right here when I try to break this thing free because that's gonna suck I don't want to have to fucking buy a new oil oil pump because then if I do that I'm gonna have to get new timing gears and then if I do that I'm gonna have to do the water pump I just want to get some oil down here from the turbos man it shouldn't be that hard but hopefully this shit doesn't break update grabbed this motherfucker slapped it up there and now it can, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it can move. All right, so I'm gonna pull this thing out and then put that extended piece up in there. Yeah, you get what I'm doing. All right, well, I thought I was filming a segment and it wasn't doing anything, so. Y'all missed out on that, but got the uh, spacer for the pan up in there, and uh, now I'm going to get my oil drains figured out for this thing. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay, got my oil return lines fitted up, I'm running down into the... Z1 Motorsports spacer. This one I had to kind of go at a weird angle just because the sway bar in these cars are shaped funny right here. They kind of curve in. <clears throat> so the next is going to be pulling the filter and putting on the relocation for that, but uh, I realized I do not have enough 10 in lines right now to finish this I don't think I am out of stock on them I thought I had more but turns out I don't this is about all I got I thought I mean hmm, I might be able to make it work but we'll see I wanted to get a little farther but I don't want it so close to the uh, turbo or the exhaust or the manifold or anything like that. But I also want it in a convenient spot too. When I change my oil, it's not a pain to try to do. So, I'll try to figure out where to put that now. Okay, so plans have changed. I'm out of the game. Well, the game has changed. But the players are the same. Actually going to happen for the... Uh, oil feeds I'm figuring out so it's gonna be a whole lot easier is the uh, oil sensors down here there's one for temperature and this is the one for the pressure um, I'm just going to tee off of this and come out and then up into the top of this one and then from over here up and into the top of that one it'll be a whole lot easier than having to relocate it, even though I would want to relocate that oil filter. Um, 
it's really not in too bad of a spot. I can reach it pretty easily, just reaching under the car. And this motor takes up a lot of space in this car, so I didn't want to have to run lines all the way down and have it up over here and then run feed lines all the way over here because that's just too many lines and too many things going on. Um, so I'm going to try to just do the uh, KISS method, which is, you know, keep it simple, stupid. So I'm going to use some fittings kind of like this. Um, these are from previous cars that I've had and spare parts, little things that have broken over the years. But, uh, so this normally would screw right into the oil sending unit on any of my older Nissans, but these 370s have a smaller, smaller, uh, diameter. Because this thing will not, for the life of me, screw into that at all. It like, won't even try. I mean, it fits nicely, but it won't. So... I need to get a new one of these and then a T to fit on the end of this to go up and get to those feeds. So then I'll just need to take these lines out and since these fit on here nicely, like so, but they're going to be facing the back way to try to keep it away from this heat and kind of wrap down and around and over to that spot and then same thing with this one it'll go over here more over there against the uh fender well or whatever wheel well and it'll be able to come down and come over so that'll be a whole lot less weight and everything else so can't wait for that to be done um i guess the next big thing for this car would be in order for to get this motor to come down, I need to move this starter solenoid off of the actual starter. And I've seen a post that was in a forum years ago where someone did this to fit this motor into a different car because they were having the same problem. Look at that tolerance gap. I mean, I can still fit a piece of paper between these two spots right there, but it is so close. And being that uh, continuous power wire and stuff, that's just not a very good location for it. But if I can move that thing and not what people are saying, clock the starter, like rotate it, because you can't rotate the starter in these things. I'm sorry, but you just, you can't do that. This ain't no old fucking Chevy or Ford, and I'm tired of hearing people say that. So, um, the best thing to do is, oh man, it makes it look so far back, but it's only like, you know, eight inches away. But you build a bracket from this bolt hole to this bolt hole, because uh, the AC used to be here and it's not anymore. Or I could even build a bracket off from this bolt hole and the one down here that's not being used. But any who's it, uh, I need to put that solenoid right here and then you just run a rod that goes into the starter and um, activates the little doodad in there to make it grab the teeth on the flywheel. But once I do that, after I get done with the turbo oiling and all that stuff, I'll be able to drop this motor down in here farther, but as of right now, the oil pan is, even with the spacer, it's dead even, basically, with the uh, uh, cross member. But I can go down a lot, like, I have a lot of distance to play with right here. Um, and eventually I'll make better motor mounts because, you know... <laughs> Some old fucking hockey pucks with some janky bent bolt. Isn't the best thing. Yeah, well, this is handmade quality shit we're talking here. Isn't the best thing, but it did its job for driving around just fine. I mean, still pulled like hell, but uh, just not the safest. So as you get older, you kind of realize things to be a little safer is better clean up that little bit of oil coming out of that hole. I thought I drained you. But, yeah, it's a work in progress. So, 
Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe.